Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I'm gonna to be making a fun soap using this fragrance from Bee Scented, Blueberry. It smells like blueberries. It smells so good, and it got good reviews that it doesn't cause discoloration or acceleration, so I'm excited to use this. I haven't soaked with this scent before. It smells awesome out of the bottle, so we're gonna give it a try for the colors. So blueberry, right? I'm using my Bell Bottom Blue from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Did I get that right? Yeah, Bell Bottom. I need to wear my reading glasses when I do descriptions. I'm always like pulling it out there. Oh, well, it's part of getting older, readers. <laughs> anyway, this is gonna be the blue, uh, and I may add a little um, activated charcoal or some black in there to darken it up, because you know blueberries are that gorgeous sort of purple blue, but you know, it doesn't have to be spot on. Blue for the blueberry. And then I will do a little teeny bit of green in there because I wanna do piping on top. I wanna to do little dollops for blueberries with some leaves. And so for the green, I'm gonna use my Pine Mica from Bee Scented, which is just a beautiful, I think a leafy green. So these are the colors. Blueberries, the fragrance. Uh, I think I'm gonna make this a coconut milk soap today and I will do the milk in oil method. So let me get everything pulled together and we'll come back and make some blueberry soap. All right, we're back and it's time to put our soap additives in. The fragrance is already in here. And let me tell you, I've got my colors off to the side here. I've got my green and I have my beautiful blue that I did add a touch of this blackberry just to darken that blue up just a little bit. So I wanted to mention that I put that in there. I've got my piping tips off to the side and I made a decision. <laughs> I found this, I just grabbed a whole bunch of baby foods a while back and apple and blueberry I thought was perfect. It's going in here, you know, cause I absolutely love how a fruit puree makes a soap lather. It's just gorgeous. So I water discounted to make room for this and my coconut milk. We're still doing coconut milk. So let's get this thick and creamy coconut milk in here. Then we'll add the baby food <laughs> fruit puree, just cause I'm too lazy to grind up my own fruit. The ingredients are very simple. It's just the fruit and a little bit of citric acid in there. So let's add that in, all this is going in. And then I will add my oats and my kale and clay and we'll get it all blended up. And then we'll come back with the lye solution when it's time to uh, get moving forward. So let's get our dry ingredients in here. All the good stuff. the lye solution and I have cane sugar, tussa silk and sodium lactate is in the lye pot as well as water and sodium hydroxide of course. So let's get this added in, We'll bring it up to emulsion, get it split for the colors, all the good stuff. I'm going to try not to pull off too much soap frosting today which I have been like to do. I tend to pull off too much soap frosting so I'm going to try to not pull off too much to do my little blueberries and uh, yeah, we'll just get to it here. <laughs> Smells great in the studio. So it's turning this beigey color, that's the lye, hitting the milk sugars in the coconut milk and in that fruit puree. So because of that, even though this fragrance doesn't have vanillin, I'm gonna add just a little titanium dioxide to the unmica portion, just to make sure it stays nice and bright, you know, for those colors. And I think I'm gonna do it in the pot swirl today. It's been a while since I've done one of those. I always love them, so. That's what I'm thinking. All right, let's get to it. Thank you. 
right, so I've got my frosting here. I'm just waiting for it to thicken up and it is obviously not even close to piping consistency. So I'm gonna go get the dishes done, get my studio cleaned up while I'm waiting for this to thicken up. So the good news is this blueberry behaves like a dream. Seriously, this is like 40 minutes later. I'm still waiting. <laughs> All my dishes are done. I'm gonna go do some stuff online. Oh my, maybe I'll come back this evening after dinner. <laughs> All right, it's the next day, and look at how cute that is. I was so happy um, with how those little blueberries came out. They kind of had to swirl the top so they didn't look like dollops, but I think they're adorable. Smells great. I can't wait to get in here, and let's see how that in-the-pot swirl came out. So let's get it out of the mold. with Olga and it's time to cut into these. I am so tickled. Loving the swirls, love the colors. I'm just really happy with everything about these. They just are making me smile. <laughs> um, and this fragrance, let me just say, uh, it does smell great, very slow to trace. I had to wait so long for that piping to come up to piping consistency. Uh, well worth the wait, I tell you what, but um, <laughs> this would have been a great soap if you have like a really intricate pour, wood pour, whatever. Well, that's kind of zigzaggy, but cool. Hmm, let's get in here. And again, the fruit puree in here is going to make these lather up so nice. Yeah, there's just something really cool and random about it in the pot swirl, isn't there? I love the sides. Oh, and the little twirls. I love it when that happens. So these blueberries, I had an idea in my mind um, about coming in 
after I made the dollops with a little piping tip and making like a little star dot on the top, but it was just too liquidy. And so I went in with that little um, skewer and swirled, and I'm very happy with how they look. I think they are definitely blueberry-ish. So I am overall really happy with these, and I think they are adorable. So this fragrance is a thumbs up for slow moving. If that's what you're looking for, give uh, Bee Scented Blueberry a try because um, it was a slow one. Oh, I love that. I hate to even break it up, but there we go. <laughs> Aw, swirly twirls. I love it. All right, let's keep cutting. Okay, here is the next loaf. Again with the sides. Aren't those just pretty? Fun to look at. <laughs> so we have actually two blueberry bushes on our property and they're loaded with fruit which I get very excited about but here's my problem the birds I love my birds around here and uh, they get the first harvest it's so frustrating the blueberries are on the bush and they're green and they're not quite ready and they're not quite ready and they turn purple and I go out with my little bucket to harvest and <laughs> the birds have come and helped themselves. So that's my woes. I have that with my blackberry bushes too. Luckily, I get enough I can bag up, you know, and freeze for the, I like to freeze them if I'm not eating them fresh or using them and making a pie or something, you know, you gotta love all the summer pies, right? But uh, yeah, the birds come and get the harvest too. So I can't begrudge them. You know, I don't blame them, but anyway, that's my deal. My blueberries aren't quite ready yet, but they are loaded up. The branches are heavy and they're just bending down with all the fruit, which is fun to see. So last loaf here. So what is your favorite summertime fruit? Do you like watermelon or any of the melons, cantaloupe, honeydew, or do you like the berries? Um, I think if I had to pick, I would go in the berry category for my favorite, but so what's your favorite summer fruit? It's always fun. I like seasonal eating too. I think it's really cool and all that. It's just something really neat about fruits on the trees and the vines and they look so pretty. So these are going to sit out for a few hours and let the surface area dry like I normally do. So I'm gonna come back in with my vegetable peeler, bevel the corners on the bars and get them ready for stamping in a few hours after they've been out and the surface area has dried a little bit. I just like to do it like that. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful day.